Cattle ranching in Arizona has been around for a long time. Now the Arizona Game and Fish Department is working with ranchers to keep them on their property and in turn keep that property open for wildlife. Arizona's cattle ranches are working landscapes, visions of the past that may have an uncertain future. The 47 Ranch in Cochise County is a cattle ranch with a rich history. Settled in the 1800s, this portion of southeastern Arizona was prime ranching country and most of it was owned by just three families who had moved here to pursue their dreams of the West. The people that established this ranch came in what I would consider sort of a second wave, just after the turn of the century. And um, two families, three families actually, ended up owning pretty much everything between Tombstone and Douglas. Uh, they were the Stevensons, the Davises, and the Cowans. And the 47 Ranch was a Davis ranch. It was established by a guy named Bill Davis, and he brought the 47 brand with him from Texas, uh, and they were, they were ranching on the other side of the Mule Mountains, I would say around 1905 or thereabouts, and the story that I've heard is that they had relatives come from Texas who were going to stay for a while and sort of moved in with them, and after they'd been there long enough, they just said, well, you guys keep this, and we'll go on the other side of the mountains and homestead another place, and so they came over here. Um, a, around 1912, we think, some definitely some history. We're we're by far and away newcomers to the to the area. Dennis and Deborah Maroney may be newcomers here, and while they appreciate the ranch's history, their goal is to preserve it for the future. They understand that the open space on their ranch is more than a picturesque backdrop. The grasslands are vital to maintaining our wildlife habitat and water supplies. The ranch itself is about 24, 25,000 acres, uh, and then we graze some additional acreage that adjoins the ranch um, on an agreement with with some other owners. So, altogether, we we graze about 34,000 acres, and um, of that, uh, we have just under 5,000 acres of deeded land and just under a fifth of that, about 19 point some percent of the land is now under easement. Uh, and our goal is hopefully to uh, eventually put uh, most or all of it under easement as much as we can. The easement Dennis Maroney is referring to is a conservation easement that places nearly 1,000 acres of the 47 Ranch under permanent protection from future development. The Arizona Game and Fish Department's Landowner Relations Program and Arizona Open Land Trust partnered with the Moronis to make this happen. It ties back to uh, similar goals from both the department and the landowner. The department is obviously looking at preserving wild, important wildlife habitat areas uh, as well as recreational opportunity and, and that was uh, uh, as well the, the goal of the, the landowner. He wanted to maintain this operating cattle ranch uh, into perpetuity and preserve uh, these areas for both wildlife and the, the sustainability of his, his agricultural operation. He didn't want to see this ranch uh, subdivided in the future and, and, and houses kind of put all over. I think really there's two or three things that make it attractive for us. The first is that um, I guess my, my whole life um, growing up in Arizona, I've been watching agricultural land be converted to residential home sites and subdivisions and um, just seems like we need to try to do as much as we can to keep some of it in open space and, and uh, wildlife habitat and, and in productive use. And so one thing that a conservation easement does is it, it removes that option 
of subdivision and, and development from the land forever. Protecting ranches isn't a fuzzy sentimental notion, but a practical strategy in one of the nation's fastest growing states. Splitting up ranches can impose costs on everyone else. Fragmenting the landscape makes it more difficult for wildlife to survive. Building homes in these rural areas means more wells, contributing to a drop in the water table. 47 Ranch is located in the Hay Mountain watershed, which drains into the Whitewater Draw, southern Arizona's most important waterway east of the San Pedro River. The particular area that we focused on for this portion of our protection plan is all in a, cab a, a canyon called Abbott Canyon. And Abbott Canyon has two branches, and the upper end of each branch has a, has a spring with live water. All down through the bottom of these canyons, from the spring on downstream, is, is uh, riparian habitat characterized by willows and backris and um, Arizona walnut, sycamore, um, you know, a real nice variety of riparian species. And, and in certain areas where there's some year-round water, uh, even, in, even in drought conditions, then all, this, all the north-facing slopes are what we, we call a, a juniper oak savanna. We have five species of oaks and alligator juniper and an understory of grasses and shrubs that's pretty phenomenal. The south-facing slopes are more what you would consider a desert grassland landscape with ocotillos and agaves, and, uh, but still you know, over 25 species of perennial grasses. So we had a lot of biological diversity to start with. Wildlife is abundant in these canyons. Everything from white-tailed deer to javelina to black bear and everything in between thrives here. The diversity of habitat and wildlife is one of the main reasons this is such an attractive area for the conservation easement. For both plant and animal species, this particular region sort of the northernmost extent of a lot of subtropical species that are more abundant in Mexico and the southernmost extent of a lot of Rocky Mountain species mm -hmm. and then it's sort of the westernmost extent of Chihuahuan stuff and the easternmost end of Sonoran Desert things so it's a real interesting um, biological crossroads. By allowing the ranchers who know their land to continue to be its steward you get the best of both worlds. We run about 400 mother cows, and we also raise registered quarter horses. We've got uh, about 10, 10 mares and a stud. We have about 20, I think 22 pastures on the ranch now, and we try to rotate the cattle through all the pastures in a sequence which moves us into a pasture um, at least a year after it was previously used and always in a little different season than it was grazed the prior year. So um, we're pretty, uh, pretty adamant on rest and rotation and our cattle have gotten used to being moved so much so that when we go to start gathering them they just line out and, and start walking because they know they're going to move to fresh feed. When the Moronis first bought 47 Ranch, it was equipped with a water system that only pumped water into areas of the ranch where the cattle were, leaving the rest of the ranch dry. It didn't take them long to see that was a big problem for the wildlife who also lived there. We have a number of windmills and a number of pumps, and one of the first things we did was to convert these submersible pumps over to solar and create a situation where water would be available over the entire ranch year round. And we have game and fish data that shows that our deer herds have increased in number, javelina herds have increased in number, uh, quail, same thing. Um, and I think just because uh, the animals, the wildlife had um, the reliability of water, and even you know, 2003 and 2004, we were in some pretty significant drought, even into 2005. We still were able to maintain those waters all over the, the entire ranch. The Moronis care about this land, and they want to know that it will flourish long after they are gone. 
The beauty of the conservation easement is that it's tied to the ranch's deed, so no matter who buys the ranch in the future, the land contained in the easement will always be protected. Part of what our, our overall goal uh -huh. is to, to have a working example of agricultural sustainability in, a, in an arid or semi-arid environment. And we have for years heard from all the experts and all the scientists and all the, the critics of ranching that, that this kind of thing is not sustainable in the Southwest. And yet, um, you know, we're, we're sitting here today after 150 years of ranching and this ranch produces a lot of food and consequently feeds a lot of people. And I think that programs like this easement program that we have been able to work out with, with Game and Fish is going to help us stay here for a, you know, for a long time to come and still be able to produce food while having a, you know, wildlife habitat that supports these other species. And I think that's really important. And, and I think it's what, what makes the whole thing really great.